do the conservative on one, you're not going to... No, I, I actually just like to turn, turn back to the, the post-chemotherapy, HER2 portion. Because Sarah brought up a very provocative practice, which I think a lot of docs might not think about intuitively, and that is give chemotherapy and dual antibodies, put out the fire, and continue the antibodies. But in this patient, um, who has Absolutely. potentially hormone-sensitive yeah. disease, add an anti-estrogen, and we, we are going to get more information on this subject from the PERTAIN trial, mm -hmm. where patients with ER-positive and HER2-positive disease are currently being randomized to uh, uh, AI and trastuzumab with or without pertuzumab. And some of those patients uh, will be getting chemotherapy up front. So this is a PERTAIN-type case, and uh, I would have managed it exactly the same way. I have one patient in my practice who got that, you know, she got the chemo before I even became a, around the time I started in breast cancer, so quite a while ago now, she's been on, I think, an AI and trastuzumab for now 11 years or something. So well, tandem some suggests. We'll have to stop it for metastatic disease. But the tandem really trial well. with AI plus or minus pertuzumab or, her, or her trastuzumab suggests that there's going to be 10 or 15 percent of those women are, that yeah. are going to be survived for a long time. She's you know, one of those women. I've also, yeah. I've also, you know, I've always, I'm always kind of impressed by um, the, uh, her, was it Hernada data where yeah. Vino, yeah. Vino Traz was fairly similar to dosi traz with less toxicity and um, you know that the the vino traz pertuzumab combination well yeah we've talked about velvet track. so there's velvet do you maybe you can you expand on velvet yeah i'm so happy that you brought this up uh, because many physicians may not be aware of the hernada trial it was mainly conducted in europe uh, although it was published uh, i think we need to refresh people's memories and you're absolutely correct there was similar efficacy between the two arms but the vinorel being uh, arm was much less toxic than the docetaxel arm. And so this, so this was chemotherapy trastuzumab. So actually, we're using the data from uh, Hernada as one of the points of rationale for the Velvet trial. And what we're doing in Velvet is that we're building from Hernada, we're building from Cleopatra. So we're conducting a phase two study, a very large phase two study, in two different cohorts. Uh, the patients have HER2 positive uh, metastatic breast cancer first line. And they receive uh, vinorelbin, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab in cohort one, which we have completed and we have analyzed in terms of safety. And in the second cohort, the patient receives also the three drugs, but we're giving the vinorelbin followed by the combination of trastuzumab, pertuzumab in, in a single bag. So that potentially will save the patients 60 to 30 minutes every time they come to the clinic. Interesting. Very and, important. And, oh, that's, and wasn't the bag part of the randomization? Wasn't there a randomization with both in the same bag and both separately? Wasn't that part of the trial or uh, not? No, no, that's not the way it's, it's written. We conducted okay. the first cohort uh, okay. of the, the sequential for each one of the drugs. And right. we, again, we have finished analysis and we're submitted a San Antonio abstract for 2013, in case okay. you want to know. I do. I, I, <laughs> which, I, of course, I'm not going to find out the results for because you won't tell us. <laughs> that's all right. I just want to say is, okay, we're talking about the chemo. One of the things that's nice about venerelbine and the velvet trials, you don't lose your Hair. You just have to be careful about the GI issues, which sometimes plague patients. But um, overall, that's you know, it's managing their bone marrow suppression primarily with vinorelbin and, and access issues. But there is now Cadsila TDM1, which you could give to patients first line. We have a little bit of phase two, nice phase two data. They don't lose their hair. This is a woman who's uh, not very old, but only 59. But if you had an older patient and they really were kind of overwhelmed, it might be an option for that patient. The issue is, would you get that approved given it's not an FDA approved use? Well, she had prior trastuzumab and but chemotherapy. Too long ago. It, that's a question. It might, it might yeah. get approved. And we don't have any data, really substantial data, to use pertuzumab in the second or third line setting. So if you I know, then you, you can't give the pertuzumab. TDM1. Exactly. Yeah, you're stuck <laughs> no, way. and that's the reason why we're doing it up front, and I think that's why you know, it'll be interesting to see what velvet is. Velvet is not all first line, or it is? It is all first line, yeah. yes. I, I see where the first V comes from in velvet. Where does the second V come from? Who came up with that name? Uh, I did not. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these are trials now that don't talk about strong women. You know, Genentech trials, you know, Mary Ann, you know, Cleopatra. <laughs> yeah. It's Teresa. not Teresa. Teresa. You know, this yeah. is not a... Anyway, but let me ask you another question.